Chris. Yeah, thanks everybody yes. for coming. Yes, we're going to go house. You want a mint? Can you all hear me okay? <laughs> okay, I'll be yeah. loud. I think we'll have a mic to hear them well. Uh, but we appreciate everybody for coming. Um, I think most of you that came probably know Kinkus. Uh, I've worked with them in some regard. If you haven't, then it should be a pretty welcome treat. Uh, but we've worked with them for multiple years now. Uh, yes. Three years or more, I think. Um, and he's uh, done some great cases for us. Uh, he's been using the Beyond Plus material for quite a few years. Yeah. Now. I appreciate that. Um, and we've learned a lot from him. So we're excited for today uh, to be able to learn tons from him yep. in the next uh, 50 minutes. Yes. And so uh, we'll turn the time over to him. Pink Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate it. Much. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. So I haven't been in Chicago for a long time. It's my pleasure, honor to be here. Thanks for bringing me back here. I don't like the weather. But I did came from Detroit, and actually I did a hands-on course with my team um, in uh, Detroit in Toledo. And uh, let's see if this works. Hold on. This one's tricky here. Hold on. Let's see. Here we go. So it's my team. This is our lab, right? So we got Debbie, my wife and partner. Ash, my son, and my designer. And this is it, three people operate. So what I'm gonna share with you is just my experiences, what's going on, how I scale the business, and my background also, and being in this business for over 45 years, and the path I took uh, with mentors and so on. And Because I was a layering ceramist, so that was my, my business, my personal business of layering ceramics every day. So I'm gonna share with you how we do it, how efficiency is the key, Training is the key because uh, this Toledo, when, when I train the dentists, I train them because I want them to be successful. With my system, the, when they apply exactly and follow me, I know exactly what works, what doesn't. I know lots of people talk about digital workflow, no models. It's great, sounds really fancy, but to me, we still need models and you'll see why. How many of you do zirconia, by the way? Raise your hands, all of you, okay. So you may experience the same problems I did because I've, I've, I've done many enough. So, if you have inaccuracy, this is what happens, okay? Little inaccuracy, if it was plastic, no big deal. It will go down. But if not, it breaks, okay? There is no if or but. It's gonna break either when they screw it or it's gonna be in the, in the lab, it's gonna break. And here's what happened. I used to do cases for a guy in um, Ohio. He was doing 50 arches per, um, per year. It was pretty big production. So I'm gonna slow down this a little bit, just kind of show you this, what happened. So, I did PMMA, in fact, I'm gonna stop. Just stop a little bit. So I did PMMAs for him first, and the, the, when I started doing hybrids, I was doing always milk PMMAs for test drive for three months. And then it's easy because you can copy it. So every time I deliver a case, he was calling me, oh, because it's so beautiful, it's so great, he loved me. And then about two weeks later, the thing was breaking. Every time, it, it, not just the Pontics in the back, but the PMMA was breaking, I said, it doesn't make sense. So I didn't trust the whole system. So when I found my solution, uh, one of the implementings, I approached him and I said, listen, uh, I have a solution, it's called EasyBar, right? You're gonna see it shortly. And uh, he said, no, no, don't worry, because they, they have in-house lab, they do nice jigs with floss and cutting it, reconnecting you know, all the BS that you see public. It's, it doesn't work. For Zirconia, it doesn't work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it uh, doesn't. So, and it was beautiful. I said, well, don't worry about it, I'm gonna come in train you, uh, your staff, I'll show you exactly how it works. So we did the same case. I said, let's take the same case and do easy bar, and then we'll compare the models. So this is what you see here in the video. The one PMMA that was in the mouth with one model, this is the model that they created, and it was fitting fine. So we did uh, the easy bar right here. <coughs> this is the easy bar capture, and uh, I made a model, same patient. So I tried to see if the easy bar will fit the first model, and vice versa. And what you see here, this is again the old model. It goes pretty go good, it goes down. And then you'll see now the easy bar, watch this. It doesn't even belong, none. It's not even the same model, but it's the same patient, right? And this is, you see when the implants are going all over the place like this, this is the model from easy bar, it's perfect. And then we took the PMMA that was done first time. Now let's see what happens to PMMA, look. It's bouncing. What the heck? Of course it's gonna break. But so what happens is when I screw it down, the PMMA went down because it flexes. 
And then he takes the x-ray, and then they call to me how beautiful it is, perfect fit. It's not perfect fit. It's under pressure, and that breaks. So zirconia will not be forgiven. That's the solution. So the solution that I come up with, with easy bar, and typically this is the typical workflow that we use. We don't even take impressions. So we use easy bar, capture in the antaglio surface only. We take the existing duplication of the existing temporary that they wear you know, after conversion. Sometimes it looks bad, sometimes it's broken. It doesn't matter how bad it looks, it's still, we need something. And then the opposing teeth, the bite, and that's it. They send me the parts, everything else, we make the model. And this is the course that I do. We teach them exactly the process with the easy bars. The easy bars come in a kit. Uh, you can go to Expedent uh, down in the um, exhibits. You can visit them. You see the kit is actually has lots of bars with different sizes. And you can, like, if you need extra bars with different sizes, you can order separately, like five in the block. So it's very easy and it's cheap, right? So this is the solution that we have. But easy bars come in this kit like that. This is a measuring tool. So you measure the distance. You use only titanium cylinders to connect them, okay? Titanium cylinders, not impression copings. Impression copings are too fat, easy bar won't go down. Because you want the easy bar to go down all the way down, or at least halfway. This is what you need to do for mass. So step one, you select the easy bar. Step two, you connect it. You can use Duralay. Today I use Stellar. Stellar is, is very non-shrinking type of material. You can use for a conversion as well. They got pink and white, doesn't matter color-wise. And uh, it's the courses that I teach now use Stellar. It's really easy, no mess. And then the doctor injects light body underneath to capture the tuggle surface because we don't need full arch impression. We don't need the roof. We don't need it. We only need the ridge. So that's it. So the patients love it because they don't have to have the gagging reflex or anything else, no trade. And so this is what comes to the lab every time with the parts. We don't charge for parts. We don't buy parts. We are not middlemen. We tell them we just charge for work, and this is the package. If it's not, it's going to delay the process. So if everything is there, we do it. Now, the whole process costs about average $7 per bar. So overall, it's like $28 for those easy bars. Just to connect them with Stellar, you're done. Now, there are digital workflows that you can use, and they're a little bit more expensive upfront investment. For example, a peak camera it can be 50K. The interval camera is about 20 or maybe less or more, you know, something like that. And then there's the InstaRiza that's also around 18 plus you have to buy the parts. So those are really, really, um, you know, upfront investment and most people don't like to invest. And you have to learn the techniques of these scanners. Because if you do bad scanning, it's still bad scanning. With EasyBar, it's something that you've done many times. You've done flask connection, you've done Duralay, you know exactly the material. So the only difference is EasyBar. And that's why it's so, so easy. So, oh, let me go to just the point that I want to make with the digital, you still, you still need model. You know, some people say, we don't need model. My brother has a lab in Israel. He does it without, he gets a file, he mills, he cements them without the model, the cylinders. And typically, all cylinders fit after sintering and after milling, if the, unless the milling is a problem. But uh, cylinders are not a problem. So here's the bridge. This is a dual arch. See, the cylinders are perfect fit. Everything is good. And if I didn't have that model, Here's what you will have. Watch this. Oops, it doesn't fit. Now, if I did this bridge with digitally all model-less kind of system like most people talk about, uh, the doctor will have a problem in the mouth because the patient is the model. That's the only time you would know. So now you're going to be embarrassed, or broken bridge or whatever, and you're going to be you know, disappointed patient. This is the lower, same problem. And here's, by the way, Expedent is the uh, company who has the easy part. So it doesn't matter how you make the model, you still need a model just because the zirconia is, could be a problem. It doesn't matter who's zirconia, sometimes they shrink different directions, and, and that's the problem with the fit. So I need to be monitoring my, my system before I send it out. I don't want patients to be surprised that something doesn't fit. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah? Okay. If it was plastic, it will go down. If it was PMMA or print, anything will go down. That's no problem. 
So in my lab, I have several different systems. I got the Zircon Zyne one. It's a long time ago when I started. I have Roland. I have the wet mill. So those are the really inexpensive tools that you can buy. That's not the machines and, and the milling machines and centering ovens. It's no big deal. The printers, everything came down in price. That's not a problem. But you still need the workflow and talent and vision still to execute. We got the ExoGuide. We got uh, Coulter printing materials that we use for this because it's a closed system, so we use that material, the white teeth, for trying only. We don't use it for functional because it's brittle. So we use it with trying with pink wax. Just to test, they adjust the bite, they send me that back for first trying. With, uh, with uh, Asiga, I love Asiga because it's very accurate, very fast. We do models and then we do some functional type of prints because there are some materials now, graphene and some other ones, that you can actually function with them. So I tell them you can function with it for a month, test drive it, and then we can do the final. We have this oven that actually, Zuber oven that sells, it's, you can put uh, three stacks of thing, you can do like nine arches at the same time. So you can center it. I've done many times, and it's amazing. But the centering process is 17 hours, which I do slowly. slowly. Um, now there are new products, I know that you guys are experimenting now with fast centering, like three hours, you got a bridge. Uh, and I've seen, I experienced one from different company. I don't know why we have to rush, okay? If you have a bridge in three hours, what are you gonna do, nine arches in three hours, okay? Then what? Do you have manpower to finish those cases? No. So most people think, oh, if I do it fast, I'm gonna cut down my prices so I can do cheaper. For me, I think it's the opposite. If I do fast that fast, I'm gonna increase my price three times. And the reason is like Delta Airlines does the same thing. If you buy a ticket the last minute, the price is three or four times more. So that's the way I think, it's a mindset, but it's up to you what you want to do. But I only use the Beyond Plus 1250 megapascal zirconia for everything, for crowns, veneers, bridges, everything. But typically we use um, our uh, process, what we offer as far as business is uh, full arches. So everybody talks about investing in equipment, you know, all this stuff, ROI. Do you know what ROI stands for? Return on your investment, okay? If you invest something, when you get the money out, to me, I think the more important thing is ROT, which is return on your time. Because the time is the commodity that you cannot buy again. It's something that if you can leverage, that's what you need to do. Because time is irreversible. You cannot replace it. If it's gone, it's gone. So three points I want to leave you with here. How you take the technology, right? create leverage of your time, and how will you increase your profit? Those are the three things. It doesn't matter how much you charge, it's how much your profit is. Because if you charge a lot and you have no profit, it's still a bad business. So leverage is the key. And we do lots of, there's two kinds of business in this full arches. There's one business, it's a repeat business, which, you know, cases that come back from previously done with, you know, nano ceramic like this, nano ceramic things breaking, uh, plastic type of restorations that to wear out and stain and stink, they want to replace. So replacement business is one business. And there's a new business where you plan properly with surgical guides, bond reduction also, and you have a different kind of workflow there. But replacing business is a huge business. I've seen a, a, a Frank Spear one time show this quote, says Bob, Bob Barkley, he's not alive, but he said, the goal of dentistry is to make the patient worse at the slowest possible rate. <laughs> That was his quote. So I was listening to it and I said, you know what? I got a better quote for him. The goal of dentistry to make, uh, uh, okay. With CATCAM dentistry in the wrong hands, now the patient can get worse and faster possible rate. And you see those CATCAM cases, I mean, it's horrible. So you guys have lots of work to do because you have to replace all those cases. And I think that's a huge, huge business. And also, there, I've seen lots of people, friends of mine, who do a beautiful job when they do like this tumble type of design with single crowns on top, with lithium, the silica, the zirconia, and they do plastic type of composite, beautiful composite. Everything looks so beautiful when you deliver, but the problem is the long term, this is how it could be. Because what happens when you have so many moving parts of single unit tiers, because there's a story that they tell, it's like, well, you know, if one breaks, then we can replace one crown. That's a great idea. But what about if it stains like that? You have to replace everything, right? Composite doesn't re resist stain or plug or anything. So I don't like this. It's a very fancy, expensive uh, temporary, I would say. But at the time when they finish, it looks great. Not for long. 
So zirconia has lots of good advantages because it's back compatible with the tissue. It's much better. There's research that shows that around tissue, if you polish it, it's really, really nice for tissue. Tissue loves zirconia. Better than metal, better than gold. But when I first started with zirconia, this is kind of case stuff I've seen out there. You know, ten, about 10 years ago, I think I started. And I said, you know, so it must be something better. It doesn't make sense. This is horrible, you know? In fact, one time I was showing uh, a, a group of doctors, you know, what's bad and what's good, right? And one doctor, when I say it's bad, said, Dr. Pincus, is it, they call me Dr. Pincus. I'm not a doctor, but uh, I kind of like that. I said, well, you know, there are blind people out there. If you like it, great. <laughs> So the question is, what business are you in? So the future of dentistry is really redoing dentistry. When I say about conversion duplication, sometimes I get this kind of cases where duplication looks like that. We can still do something because we have some reference point. Sometimes you have to do more than one trying, but typically we only do one trying and then finish it. So people talk about AI, you know, artificial intelligence, like it's going to solve your problem. They're smarter than you. I think you do need your own intelligence. And AI stands for me, Adar Intelligence, you see? They thought about me, so. So uh, zirconia can be monolithic, zirconia can be beautiful as, as any layer ceramic. I've done a study, I did seven patients, so it was a combination of different cases, veneers, crowns, combination with implants, and I took the, upon myself to do a test, because people tell me how beautiful my zirconia is and they didn't know why. And um, so what I did is I did the lithium desilicate case with mi minimal layering, finish the restoration, then I scan that and duplicate and mill it in solid zirconia, finish that. And when I delivered cases, typically they didn't know which one is which. There's A and B. I left them alone, I didn't tell them nothing, say, whenever you choose which one patient likes, let me know and we'll decide. 100% of cases of this test end up with solid zirconia, 100%. Patients prefer zirconia versus lithium desilicate, layered lithium desilicate. So sometimes we think like, oh, you need layering. You need... No, you don't. You can have beautiful zirconia with no layering. The only layering we do is the pink ceramic. So my, my favorite quote is from Gene Rome. If someone is going down the wrong path, he doesn't need motivation to speed him up. What he needs is education to turn him around. So I hope you guys here educated kind of know, am I doing the right thing? Ask the right question to yourself. And maybe you can have to turn around and educate you. So social media, social media marketing is really important because now everybody can speak. And now I'm big in it because you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, nobody knew what technician is, who is a doctor, who makes the teeth. If you want to show what you do, you can actually speak up. It's no big deal. I have Andrew here. Uh, I brought him here. He's my social media. He's in the back there recording. And he does an amazing job with me. So we film it in our place. He came to my place. He taught us what kind of filming he needs. We sent him the film, and he had it. Amazing. I don't have time to do social media. You know, I'm better do the arches, right? But he does. He's good and he's fast. So here's one of the tests that we did to see if my zirconia is actually. If you want to test if your zirconia works, just make sure you drive with your car. I'm trying to do this bridge to destroy it with any car. This is my car, but I'm going to try with my friend's car, with big pickup trucks, different cars, to make sure that this bridge is really strong. So let's check it out. It's not edited, it's like straight film. It's not edited video, so you can see what you want. Yeah, it's not edited video, Wow. You see, that's how you know if your zirconia is strong enough to do hybrid with. I don't use multi layers, I don't use any other zirconia, just this one. 1260 megapascal, and I know this is going to survive any, any car. This is a pretty large car, but I'll try other cars too. So, you want to do your test? Do it yourself. Yep, do it yourself. See what it works, if it works or not. So those are kind of marketing that um, 
uh, create awareness. So marketing is all about being uh, aware, you know, let people know about you. That's all it is. Because you can be the best, but nobody knows about you, you have no business. So you need to create awareness. Uh, but, you know, the, the curse of knowledge, you know, because some people know so much, but then they'll do what they know. So to be 100% better, you don't have to do 100% in one day. What you have to do is really improve only 0.3% a day. If you do every day 0.3%, by the time the year ends, you are in 100%. So that's how you do incremental it's compounding effect, but you can get better that fast. So the only question you'll say about your knowledge is really, do you have results? If you don't have results, that means knowledge is useless. You may know a lot of things, but if you don't show results, then it doesn't matter. For example, if I give you an example, maybe in this business, but about, um, let's say you know how to lose weight or how to exercise, how to be healthy, but you don't look it, doesn't matter. Or you know how to invest, but you don't have money, that's not good, right? So in, the, in dentistry, it's the same thing. If you don't have results, then um, you know, knowing it's not enough. So I team up with uh, Lars Hanson, he's also a friend of mine for many years. He does uh, one part of the business where we have new cases. He does all the planning, he does all the conversion, he does the flying around to convert. I don't do that, I don't have time. I'm too expensive anyway, I can't afford to fly everywhere. But he, that's his business. We're separate businesses, but put together. We have other partners that have done, Adver, for example, does all the stackable guides, that's his business. So we took four businesses together, collectively we offer, offer services. And the reason I did that, because originally when I started doing hybrids, uh, most doctors loved my work, but they couldn't send me. And I said, why? Well, because they already prepaid somebody else uh, because they sold them a package with surgical guide and final zirconia as well, so they have to pay twice. So that was the problem that I found. That's why we kind of put together our forces, and we are now the A team, really, because we have collected we have about 150 years of experience. So that's that's how powerful it is. We are not under the same roof. We don't have to be with technology, with FaceTime, and all this other stuff. You don't need to be in the same time. So the results are key because when you get the results that look natural and patients uh, are happy and the doctors send you texts, I always ask the doctors, when I send a case, I always ask them not how beautiful it was, was it nice, the patient liked it, because I know it's going to be beautiful. I did it, of course. But what I ask them is, how long did it take you to deliver? That's the only thing. Because I try to create value for them, not because I know it, uh, to be beautiful, to be amazing, it's only minimal requirement. You have to be good. But how long it took? That's the key. And uh, they also send me like texts always, how long it takes them. And this Brian O'Neill actually um, from Toledo, I did the course uh, a few days ago, he, he delivered a full arch and he says, two minutes and 27 seconds, including talking to the patient. Full arch delivery. So that's, that's where the compliments I'm looking for. I'm looking for, oh my God, you're so great, oh, you're so nice. Well, I know it's supposed to be nice. That's a minimum requirement. Send me this kind of text with pictures, you know. They use iPhone, but I mean, that, that, that's, that's a compliment. She, I mean, that's how you maintain doctors and they send you back. So I was mentored by Willie Geller. How many of you are Willie Geller? Anybody? Yeah. He's very famous. He was my mentor. I met him when I was 15. I probably, the... Uh, the guy that still knows him the most because the rest are dead, but I'm still alive, so <laughs> I'm still going strong. But uh, yeah, he still works today. He's about 80, and uh, I learned a lot of tricks from layering ceramic. And for me, it was easy because I never really programmed my brain say I couldn't do it. Many people say, oh, Willie can do it. I can do it. Well, you already didn't limit yourself. You're never going to do it. So for me, when I saw him, I said, well, if he does it, I can do it too. So I just copied, and I, I learned from that. And then I learned by doing real cases, and then all those tricks I applied to it. So same thing I know from layering, I apply into solid zirconia. This actually 45 years ago. That's a, after I watched for one, one week with Willie. I was there. I was bored. I asked him, can I do something? So he gave me some models with uh, metal, experiment metal. So I layered. That was with Vita Ceramic. Everything he was doing, I was doing, right? I didn't know why, what I was doing, but I did it 45 years ago. It's the first ceramic ever. So I know how to create illusions, how to create, how to see things. And my business, when I was initially working with uh, a Goldstein Garber's office in Atlanta, I was employed there for two years. Then I opened my own business inside the business. So patients were paying directly to my services because they had in-house lab, but I was a separate lab. But you know, if somebody wants it, they pay me. That was my business, my personal business. 
And uh, I was doing those kind of cases when you do single crowns, try to match, and you know, spend time, small designs. And it was expensive, but patients willing to pay, then I do it. If they don't, they have their own in-house labs. So there was a no losing kind of strategy. But the question is really, how much is enough? How much is the right price? Even today, I had last year, I just did a case. You know, uh, a lady I did 20 years ago, I did a case. Her six teeth, the tissue uh, shrunk, and she lives in North Carolina somewhere, and uh, she didn't want to come to Atlanta. And she asked me, Pincus, can you do my case? I said, well, I don't do any more single crowns. I do only full arches. That's what I do. And she said, well, I beg you because you did such a good job last time. So I referred to my friends, some oral design friends that I know they're capable uh, locally. And uh, she went there, and he was too busy. He couldn't help her. And finally, I said, you know what? If I do it, I, you know, I'll give you my estimate. But you, know, you decide if you want it. That's fine. I'll do it. I never work with the doctor that she's going to. So I gave her estimate. So look at the estimate. Six, 6 to 11, PMMA milled 550 per tooth times 6, 3300. Final restoration 6 to 11 is 3650 times 6, 21,900. Six crowns. That's shocking. How, how shocking is that? Is that shocking? Have you seen any higher fees than that? No, right? Now, how do you come up with that fee? I just made it up. Yeah. I hope she says no. That's what, I mean, I tried to race, so she said no. But she says yes, and I did it. So she sends a check. It's true, it's not a fake story, it's real. So the reason I'm showing you is because there is no limit for how much you can charge. You can charge whatever you want. Everybody makes up, because some people ask, how much do you charge so I can charge less? No, I don't do that. How much do you charge so I can charge more? See what I mean? So you have to create value, and so people have to believe in you. So. First time I started doing the first full arch zirconia, that was Aldo Leoparde in Denver. I did, and this is with zircons on at the time. You see, we milled uh, the thing, we cut back, the buckle was cut back. I think it's better there. You see the cut back is there, so protect the ceramics. So we did white teeth as well as pink. I used to take like eight bakes or nine bakes to do this thing. It took me like 80 hours to arch. And I did the case, and everything was beautiful. I went there, delivered with Ash, actually went, filmed the whole thing. Everybody was happy. And uh, about two weeks later, uh, Aldo calls me and says, hey, mate, we got a problem. I said, what's the problem? Well, Terry chipped a little ceramic off the lateral, sheared a little bit. Really? Well, can you polish it? Well, I can polish it, but he probably won't be happy. Because that case, I charged him $60,000 dual arch right here. 60000 that was my first, because I wouldn't do it for less, because I knew it's going to take like, lots of time. So uh, the patient didn't have a problem with the money. So he was wealthy enough. Uh, in fact, he was so wealthy that his goal was to do those cases so he doesn't have to brush his teeth or do anything. He wants something that's permanent. That's what he said. You know, he, he sold his company, he's so rich. And uh, the only thing he does uh, every day, he gets up, he smokes weed and drinks. That's it. You know, alcohol. So he's always drunk when he comes. But that's beside the point. So uh, we did this case. So I said, you know, I'll do, I, I feel sorry, but, you know, $60,000, I cannot charge again. So I got it back. So I debonded cylinders. I repaired the ceramic. I polished it nicely and then cement again. It was many hours of work, but for free. Sent it back. Everything was great. Nothing changed. And about a month later, he did the exact same thing. So that was when I decided, okay, well, we have to change strategy here. Do I want to be in a repair business, right? So I have to figure out, can I do monolithic only, no layering, because I don't want this business. Because last year we did 250 arches, full arches like that in our lab. If I had 250 arches come back for repair, I'd probably kill myself or disappear, something like that, just telling you. So the other problem here, you know, everybody was doing those denture looking designs, you know, when flanges, like actual denture looking to close all these gaps and stuff. So we said, oh, let's do that on him because he wanted to medically seal everything. So we did that. And we did kind of study about it. This is what it looks like. So the study shows that six months, it looks nasty. But when you ask somebody who shows beautiful cases and say, how can you clean underneath? Everybody will say, oh, yes, the cornea is self-cleaning. You don't need to clean. Really? This is what it is. So we don't offer that anymore. If it's, uh, if it's necess necessary to do those kind of flanges, it has to be a removable device, not fixed. And we just don't do the case. 
So what we did is modified, we told Terry we have to change. So we modified the design, we did modified ridge lab basically, we create channels for cleaning. We told him he has to use um, a water pick and um, so we did that. And that's the first zirconia I did monolithically, like full arch, about 10 years ago. So I had to do something and then I, with that we stuck more experiment, we tried different products. Every day we try different things, just like doing cer ceramic layering. And um, so if you look at coloring of different things, you know, you experiment because you want to see, can you get as close as possible to nature? Now, if you look at those three teeth, one of them is actually a natural tooth. The rest are, you know, solid zirconia. So we can mimic natural teeth very well. So the system that I use in my lab is every client, the new client, we give them for free. We do a five customized shade tab. And the reason is because zirconia reflects differently. So this... This product is made of the same block that I use, same origin, same material, because I don't want to be surprises at the end. When patient sees that, they can ch choose which color they want, because I can duplicate that. Doesn't matter if I color it, or Ashley colors it, or whoever, in their lab, it's gonna be exact, because we have a system. The system is a bleach shade, which is complete white. There's OM2, I have a A2, B1, and C3. So those are the five shades I chose, because it's most popular. And I've done cases in C3 as well. So there are some cases we do dark teeth. But the point is to select what shade the patient wants. I don't care. As long as they choose, they're gonna get what they choose. Once they send me the picture of that, they always have to send me a picture with the prescription, the front and the back, what says what shade it is. We put in the file. If they want to redo and change their mind, it's too dark or too white, that's okay. We'll do it again, it's full chart. So they know that that's actually the policy because that's the way we do it. So the reason we do it, and that's what you do here, is to help people to impact their life, because that's what drives me, actually, helping people change their lives in a way that it's really meaningful for them. So this is a process that typically what's happening, we get the easy bar connected. Sometimes they use a, a, you know, the long screws, sometimes no screws, just the short screws. And then today, like I said, we don't use Duralay, we use the Stellar. It's a great product. You can use that for Conversion as well, they have a pink shades and they have white shades for teeth, but doesn't matter how you connect, but use that. It's a dual cure, so you can do it with light as well as a self cure. So you know for sure, once the doctor connects this, the first step is take it out, check with fingers, make sure nothing moves. If it moves, no big deal, you can add to it, put it back in, screw it back in, and then cure it again. But it has to set in the mouth. Before they connect the easy bar, they do have to take x-ray, make sure the cylinders are down. That's one thing, step one is to actually put the cylinders, take x-ray, make sure everything's down. Because if you connect easy bar and one of the abutments are not down, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be a problem. And then they send me this package, like I said, always same. And uh, they send me original shade, what they chose with the Vita shade, but Vita shade and my custom shades are not the same. It doesn't matter because we do design first and we'll print. And then here's the duplication. We use stone to pour into that retainer box, the duplication of the prosthesis that they have, conversion, whatever. Some conversions are off, some of midlines are off, some are actually pieces, not all of it. So it doesn't matter, as long as we have something, then we can cement that and um, uh, glue it on the model and then scan everything. So that's the data acquisition for us. We have the models, the preps, the conversion scans, the tissue and the bite, that's it. Then we go into Exocut, select teeth, you can move around based on the midline that you want to change, because they give me a picture of the patient with the floss, which way to go. So we superimpose that. Two-dimensional, but the key with the bad picture is to make sure that the picture is not crooked, it's straight, eyes are parallel to the ground, not like this, not like that, and not like that. Because lots of doctors work from the side when they take picture, my midline is always like, I don't see, I see only one ear. So I tell them, I say, if I don't see both ears, I'm gonna guess. It's only a guess, so good pictures help. Now there are some ways to do 3D facial scan that helps because they can rotate and you can do lots of things, but um, typically just picture with iPhone would be helpful. So this is the printed uh, design with pink wax. And just to show as a reference, they adjust the bite, they do everything uh, to that material. It's soft, it's not functional. And then they send me the picture, as I mentioned, you see the, um, so they like this bright shade, but they want it a little bit B1. We can do that. 
So basically what I do, I create the color of on two, then I manually paint the B1 around the neck. So that's, that's a step I take. And then how I make the shade taps is, every time I have a case, I have leftover block instead of throwing away, I just have a tooth that has a root in it, and I just mail them all the leftovers, and I have accumulation of, so I don't waste the product, I don't do it specially for that shade guide, it's part of the process. So we throw away after we mail that, and then we engrave whatever shade's gonna be, and we color it. So that's pretty simple, you can do the same. And the thing with the uh, solid zirconia versus layering is that the fact that shaping and everything else, uh, it's easy to duplicate, like this ash trimming the, the shaping of the tooth. Uh, it's easy because it's not much to trim. You can do a surface texture, and then we use the uh, rubber wheels, which is the uh, rustler, which I love. This is something I do for, forever. And for b big arches, it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to shape everything. This wheel is lifesaver. It's worth every penny. So centering, um, you know, how do you center with support, no support? I've done both, I've done many of them. Sometimes if you see cracks like that, tends, you see that source cracks. With the iPhone flashlight, I can see this one, for example, was like separated here a little bit. So you know if something like that, you see it after centering, there is a problem. It may not fit, okay? So today, we don't, 99% of cases, we don't do support at all actually makes it worse. So we actually save material as well as uh, it's better fit. But some cases, like I say, there are some problems and you can never fix. So we try different support systems, you know, circle or horseshoe, like a Zircon Zan has a, like designs that they do and you know, it made it worse. The coloring, its system is, they have five different incisal uh, inhibitor, in, in, enhancers. But I use one. The why I use one? Because I don't want to guess what did I use last time. You know, every shade, if it's different, then it's not a system. So we used only the light one. Doesn't matter if it's C3 or A1 or A2, doesn't matter. I just want to be a, a, a standard. So when Ashley is asking me, what did you use? It's the same, right? I don't have to guess. So we color the same way. Uh, if it's a trying customized shade, all bridges, it's all painted the same way. Right? But we have to dry for 20 minutes at least. And you can use um, the, the light, the hot li light lamp. So 20 minutes is a must. So coloring system, you know, I used to color with manually, you know, like paint it, you know, lots of people show like how to paint with tan. It was not predictable for me. It was okay, sometimes it's better than others. And myself, I couldn't color the same way twice. There was not predictability. So today I use the dipping technique because dipping technique is faster, but I always time one minute. One minute, dipping. So the shade tabs are done the same way, the big bridges the same way, crowns, veneers, whatever. And now I get the exact same shade. If I do it, Ashley does it, it doesn't matter. It's going to be always the same. So dipping was a better solution. Once I do the incisal, dry for 20 minutes, then I do one minute dipping, and then dry again 20, at least 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So that's systematic and you blow air, you dry, and uh, then you uh, actually immerse in the granules. I use uh, Zubler uh, granules now. It's much smaller than Zirconzan. Those are very thick. Sometimes they were sticking in it. I couldn't take it out from the Zirconia, and I use that. You can see there are bigger trays. You can actually put three bridges in one tray with that oven I have, and then you can stack them up three times, and you got nine bridges. It's really cool. So, but I do center for 17 hours. I do slow cooling, a slow raise, because uh, I don't want to rush it, I have time. I got plenty of cases to work on anyway, so it's no problem. If you have one case, you have to wait 17 hours, like, come on, you know, it's a... Uh... Then, first step is, you know, we take out the abutments from the trying, we pop them out, and then we try the abutments individually first and then collectively see if it fits, it doesn't rock. So that's a typical, if it fits, you know, I pray every night when it's centering, I actually go and pray night, you know, it's like, oh, thank God, when the next day comes, I'm excited, kind of see, is that gonna fit? And if it fits, individually great, collectively great. Then I check, one thing more I check, because I do something that nobody else does, it's a jig, a stone jig, it's very crucial. That's what makes my cases sit for two minutes or something like that, because of the jig. But the models is a must. See, this one fits. See, perfect, no rock. So that's a good step, so I feel better. Now I feel good. The next thing, it has to fit the jig. 
if it doesn't fit jig, there's a problem somewhere. If I didn't have a model, I only have a model with antagonists, you wouldn't know if it's going to be OK. And that's, uh, that's exactly what's happening here. So this is before the prints. The prints are really creating a vision. Because you know, we all have the same equipment. You know, equipments are cheap to buy today. It's no big deal. The thing is, the difference, the outcome is different. Why? Because everybody has different vision. Everybody talks about digital smile design. Well, it's a great concept. It's a great idea, great word. But once you take the exocut teeth and you start scaling them or change them, that's your design. That's not digital. It's yours, your signature. So the tooth is changed. It's not like standardized. So digital is a tool. It's not a panacea. It's not something that's going to solve your problem. So you need to have a vision in your head what you want. And then you mill. You see there's no support at all. So you can sometimes do two arches in one block. And then to cut them off, I use this carbide uh, high speed to cut them off so it doesn't vibrate. I used to do manual uh, engine, but it, it's better with high speed. And so this is actually duplication of the adjusted printed design. See, it's sprayed. This is duplication. And I duplicate the occlusal and everything else. And then I use the creation ceramic to layer. I used to use like three, four different bakes for creation. I do first bonding bake and this bake and that bake. It's nonsense. So I do one bake now. And I time myself. Every time is the time myself, see fast enough, how fast I can get. It's all, for me, it's almost like a sport, sport. You know, like, can I get faster? And um, today I get to a point where I can do in 20 minutes one bake, one, you know, with all the layers in one bake. So that's actually very efficient as well. Sometimes I'll hold two bridges together and build, build them at the same time. So it's really, really fun kind of exercise. Try it. So those are the colors I use. I start with dark, then I do like lighter pink, and then some lighter around to create like a definition of like pressure around the teeth shape, root eminence, and so on. So I do it very, very fast. Then I bake that. I mean, uh, I got today, I got a new oven also from Zubler that I can put uh, uh, three arches at the same time. It's the biggest muffle that they have. It's the largest muffle. So you can actually bake three arches at the same time for pink. Pretty cool. And one, one, one thing I do, something different, is also whatever ceramic you use, I use creation, but you use whatever. Uh, I always add about 20 to 30 degrees higher, whatever high temperature is, so the ceramic kind of melts into the zirconia. Because sometimes ceramic, when you layer on zirconia, it kind of separates, creates like voids in between. It doesn't bond really well. So this one actually helped me, and then it kind of seals everything, almost like soldering. And then I use a 3D um, uh, glaze type of thing, material from Zirconzan. I love that product because I've been using it for many years. It does an amazing job. I can do glaze in one. It's a, almost a ceramic. It's 3D. It's not dark glaze. There's two parts, 3D, um, and you're going to love it. You do it one time, it's perfect. So this is the final. And you can see all the detail. One bake of glaze, and everything pops. This is the delivery day. I was there. She's from Dr. Lee is from Atlanta, so I went there to kind of document the case because we're doing publication together. And uh, patient was good. Uh, no adjustment necessary, not even one, because I copied the adjustment of the print so well with the jig. The jig is the key. It's the final. So. Now, the selection of color, and some people say, well, that's too bright. Well, that's what he chose. I'm not a judge. I'm not God. I don't care what colors they use. If they want super white, I had one lady. Uh, she was like 80 years old. We did like full arts on her. We were selecting, and the doctor was talking to her about colors. Well, if we want natural, you know, we should go with this uh, darker shade so it kind of matches. And the lady looked at us like, do you see anything natural about me? <laughs> like, wh why we're so hung up about natural? I mean, people don't care about natural. They have makeup, they have hair colors. I mean, they do lots of things. So impact people's life is really, really the key because we, uh, we can change some young guy's life like that. Uh, obviously, they have problems with you know, drugs and so on. But, uh, and you ask, well, who's going to pay for that? You know, kids don't have you know, money. But 
the support system, the parents or the grandparents, and, and that's what you can do. But you can serve so well this, this needed, needed service that we need. And you can change people's lives. Young people, look at that. It looks like a movie star there. See that? Young person. And people come in different ways, you know. Doesn't matter what age, you can change their life. See, the color is darker here, but that's what you want. They're more comfortable with it. Insertion was 10 minutes, no adjustment again. See, Lars was there as one of his doctor. And look at this lady, unveiling videos. Look at that. She's so excited. That's a dual arch. So you get uh, really impact people's life really meaningful ways, because I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. Every time. So if you have opportunity or your doctors or whoever you work with to capture the moment of, of this unveiling, it's a key because sometimes you see things that you don't know how they react. And uh, one of the ladies I delivered, um, we did all on four, but the, it, was, it was more than just all on four. It was six unit all on four, actually four implants. And we added veneers, just to show you. Just, uh, this is my place, by the way, and you can take a picture if you want to connect with me. You can follow me on social media. And this is our lab, you've seen that. But we do teach a lot in our lab. Um, but I think one of the things that drives me, for me, and I've been in this business over 45 years, I uh, reinvent myself all the time. And when somebody tells me you can't do that, I say, well, let me show you, and I do. Because I, you know, I, no is not an answer. No is means K and O, like, I don't know enough. So I try to figure out. And, uh, but when I came to this country, I tell you, uh, it was uh, many years ago where I didn't have much, I didn't know English, and I only had 300 bucks in my pocket, but I was invited by Dr. Goldstein, so uh, people tell me, wow, why are you going there, you know? You're so good in Israel. I was from Israel, and I was pretty good. I was making lots of money. In fact, when I left, my boss actually offered me, it was 35 years ago, $10,000 per month to stay with him and be partners with him. 10000 a month, 30-something years ago. That's a lot of money. Even today's level, it's, it's a lot of money. Most people will take it. But the thing is, I had to tell him, listen, you know, my dream is not for sale. You know, I say I had to, I had to go because I had to follow my dream. And so when I went there, I went to Europe. I spent one year there, and the Goldstein invited me after he heard from Willie Geller that I was the best student and so on. So I was their technician for two years. Uh, I was actually getting paid less. And I said, you know, is money really important? Because if I took the money, I'll probably be very wealthy maybe, I don't know. But my life will be different. I won't see you guys. I'll be a different path. So every path has outcome. But I'm glad that I did what I did because $10,000 is no big deal. It's just something I can do in one hour. You know, it's no big deal. I can do that. That's easy to, money It's easy. Money is fabricated by humans. It's just a piece of paper. The way I see money is a thank you note for service well done. That's what it is. You know, we give value to the money. And money typically is like a magnet. It goes towards values, right? It attracts value. So if you're patient or whoever the doctor is and they don't see value in you, you have to create value interpreter so you can actually explain why it's so valuable. Now I get paid not because I don't know if I'm good or bad, but if people pay, that means it's good. I don't know. They see a value in it. Now if they didn't see value, they take that money and goes maybe on cruise line or a nice Rolex watch or whatever. So money is not something that says, no, I cannot charge that much. Yes, you can. Money is made up. It's fake. It's just an idea. So I hope something that uh, moves me every day is a desire. You know, passion is good, but desire. I think every morning you get up, you get excited about what you do. That's what it's all about. Because when you get bored and you're like, oh, shoot, it's Monday again. Oh, thank God it's Friday. If you have that kind of attitude, no. My day, I don't know what week it goes. I don't know where's the week. Because it's already Friday? Oh, my God. You know, I can't wait for the Monday. I can't wait for Sunday because I work on Sundays. That's my favorite day anyway. But anyway, desire. Keep with desire. Keep with passion. And thanks for sharing the time with me. I hope you get some value. Thank you.